Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how we can go about implementing our delete method for our binary heap. So to get started, we're going to be implementing our delete method for a minimum heap. And once you know how to implement it for a minimum heap, you should pretty much know how to do it for a maximum heap. So we're going to start with our private data members. We have our heap, which is going to be the array we store our data in. Our heap size is going to be used for multiple things. It's going to be used to keep track of the number of elements within our array, and it's going to be used to make sure we have enough space to insert. It's also going to be used to insert at the last available position within our array. And our array size is obviously going to be the size of our array. Moving on, we're going to have six helper methods. Our get left child method is going to generate the left child index of the index we pass in. Our get right child method is going to generate the right child index of the index we pass in. And our get parent method is going to give us the parent index of the index that we pass in. Our next method is going to be a simple swap method. We take in two indices and we just swap the data between those indices. So this is going to be used when we swap data between the child and parent nodes when we go to heapify our tree. Next, we have our has right and has left, which is just going to return true or false on whether or not a node has a left or right child. Moving on to our one argument constructor, we get passed in size, which is the size of our array. We then use that size to dynamically create our array. We then set our heap size to zero, since there are zero elements within our array. And we initialize our array size to the size that was passed in. Now our remove method first checks to see if our heap size is equal to zero. If it is equal to zero, that means there are zero elements within our heap. So there's nothing to return. So we just return minus one to symbolize that our heap is empty. Now, if we reach our else statement, that means that our heap is not empty. So first we save the data at the root of our tree. We then replace the root node with the rightmost node on the last level of our tree. And then we decrement our heap size since we've removed our root node. Now we check to see if the heap size is greater than one. If it is, we need to heapify our tree to make sure that the node we just inserted as the root node is in the right position. If it isn't, that means that we only have one or no nodes left within our tree, which means there's nothing to heapify. And afterwards, we just return the data from our previous root node. Taking a look at our heapify down method is going to be passed in the index. So the first time we execute our heapify down method, it's always going to start at index zero, which is our root index. We then get the index of the left and right child nodes of the root node. We then set the minimum index equal to the index that we've passed in. We now check to see if the node has a left child and if the left child is less than our current min. If this is true, we set the min equal to the left child index. And likewise, we do the same for the right child, checking to see if the right child exists and if the right child is smaller than the current min. If it's true, we set the minimum index equal to the right child index. We now check to see if the minimum index does not equal to index. If this is true, that means we need to swap the data between the parent and the child node. And now we recursively call our heapify down method. And this will continue executing till our tree is heapified. All right, so now let's give an example of the delete method in action. So first we create our heap and we've inserted a bunch of data within our tree. So now let's call our remove method on our heap. So we're going to be using a stack just to trace what's going on when we make our recursive calls. So we're just going to be pushing this on top of the stack. So now we check to see if our heap size is equal to zero. It's not, so we move on to our else statement. We save the data at our root node, and now we replace the root node with the rightmost node on the last level of our tree. We then decrement our heap size since we've removed our root node. Now we check to see if our tree needs to be heapified. In this case, it does, so we invoke our heapify down method. So let's push this on top of the stack. Now we get the left and right child index of our root node. 
We then set the current min index equal to our root index. We now check to see if the left child is less than our current min. In this case, it is. So we set our min index equal to the left child index. We now check to see if the right child is less than the current min. It's not, so we move down here. We check to see if the minimum index does not equal to the index we just passed in. In this case, it's not equal to each other. So we swap between these two indices. And now we just recursively call our heapify down method. So let's push this on top of the stack. Executing our heapify down method once again, we get the left and right child index of the current node we're at. We set our minimum index to the index that we just passed in. We now check to see if the left child is smaller than the current min. It's not, so we move down here. We check to see if the right child is smaller than the current min. In this case, it is, so we set the min to the right child index. We now check to see if min does not equal to the index we passed in. It doesn't, so we swap between the two indices, and then we recursively call our heapify down method. So let's push this on top of the stack. Now we're here again. We now get the left and right child nodes of the node that we're currently at. We now set the minimum index to the index of the node we just passed in. We now check to see if the left child is lesser than the current min. It's not, so we move on. We check to see if the right child is less than the current min. It's not, so we move down here. Is min not equal to index? It fails this test, so we're done executing our heapify down method. So we could pop this off the stack. We return to our previous heapify down method, which has also finished executing, so we could pop this off the stack. And finally, we return to the previous heapify down method, which has also finished executing, so we pop this off the stack as well. We return our remove min method, which now returns the data from our root node. And now it has also finished executing, so we could pop this off the stack. And our main function gets notified that our remove min method has finished executing, so we could pop this off the stack and continue executing the rest of the code. So now we move down here and we call our remove min method. So let's push this on top of the stack. We check to see if the heap is empty. It's not, so we move down here to our else statement. We save the data at the root node that we're about to delete. We then replace the root node with the rightmost node within the last level of our tree. And then we decrement our heap size since we just removed a node. We now check to see if our tree needs to be heapified. It does, so we execute our heapify down method. So let's push this on top of the stack. We get the left and right child indices of our root node. We then set the minimum index to our root index. We now check to see if the left child is less than the current min. And in this case, it happens to be true. So we set the minimum index to the left child index. We now check to see if the right child is less than the current minimum node. In this case, it is. So we set the minimum index equal to the right child index. Now we move down here. We check to see if the minimum index does not equal to the index that we've passed in. It isn't, so we swap between these two indices, and then we recursively call our heapify down method. So we push this on top of the stack. Executing our heapify down method once more, we get the left and right child indices of the node that we just passed in. We set the minimum index to the index of the current node that we're currently at. We then check to see if the left child is smaller than the current min. In this case, it's not, so we move on to check to see if the right child is smaller than the current min. It's also not true. Now we move down here. We check to see if the minimum index does not equal to the index that we've passed in. It fails this test, so we're done executing this heapify down method. So let's pop this off the stack. We then return to our previous heapify down method which has also finished executing, so let's pop this off the stack as well. We then get returned back to our remove min method, which now returns the data from the node that we just removed. And now, since it's also finished executing, we could pop this off the stack as well. We get returned to the main function, which now knows that our remove min method has finished executing, so we could pop this off the stack as well and continue executing the rest of the code. 
So let's execute our remove men method one more time. So let's push this on top of the stack. We now check to see if our heap is empty. It's not, so we move down to our else statement. We now save the data within our root node, and then we just replace our root node with the rightmost node on the last level of our tree. And now we just decrement the size of our heap since we successfully removed a node. Now we check to see if our tree needs to be heapified, and it does, so we call our heapify down method. So let's push this on top of the stack. We now get the left and right child node indices of our root node. We then set our minimum index equal to the index of our root node. We now check to see if the left child is smaller than the current min. It is, so we set our minimum index equal to the index of the left child. We now check to see if the right child is smaller than the current min. It's not, so we move down here. We check to see if min does not equal to the index that we've passed in. It's not, so we swap between the indices. We then recursively call our heapify down method. So let's push that on top of the stack. And once again, we get the left and right child nodes of the node that we're currently at. We then set the minimum index to the index of the node that we're currently at. We then check to see if the left child is smaller than the current min. It's not, so let's move on. We now check to see if the right child is smaller than the node that we're currently at. It's not, so we move on. We now check to see if the minimum index does not equal to the index that we've passed in. This fails, so we're done executing our heapify down method. So let's pop this off the stack. We then return to our previous heapify down method, which has now also finished executing. So let's pop this off the stack as well. We get returned to our remove min method, which now returns the data from our root node. Now our remove min has also finished executing, so let's pop this off the stack as well. And finally, our main function is notified that our remove method has finished executing, so we could pop this off the stack as well. So that's pretty much the ins and outs of how we could go about deleting a node from within our binary 